What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 28. Ooh. Can you guys believe that? Episode 28. It's wow. flown by. Uh, it's flown by of the wow. Talk and Pop podcast. <laughs> when we ended last week, I sort of was like, we'll be back next week and we're going to review Moon Knight episode four and mm -hmm. whatever else comes our way. And boy, did something ever come our way. Yeah. Big Marvel time. Marvel never lets us down. We say this all the time. And they officially released the first teaser for Thor Love and Thunder. I have something I want to lay on you guys here. All right. All right. This, yeah, let's hear this. This teaser made me feel things. <laughs> Was it, it just it? Was it Chris Hemsworth's new bulging muscles and lack it, of it, tummy? He looks fantastic. Um, <laughs> so since Endgame, we've had a ton of Marvel content. We've had all the Disney Plus shows. Mm -hmm. We've had Shang-Chi. We've had Eternals. We've had two Spider-Man movies, one of which has Doctor Strange yeah. in it. But this... This really felt post Endgame to me. Like watching yeah. it, I, I was really like, it, it struck an emotional chord with me. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because, you know, it's Thor who's one of the OGs and it's the dialogue that he has in the trailer, which is very much like my superhero days are behind me. It just, and seeing the Guardians. Yeah. Like it mm -hmm. really, yeah. really, really like struck an emotional chord with me. Like, I don't know about you guys. Like, what did you guys think about it? Kelly, start with you. Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, I'll say it's about time because we're mm -hmm. under three months away from this uh, movie being released. I know this date very well. My wedding is on the same day as this movie is wow. coming out. So, so you will I, not be seeing. I will not the be at the theater. Out. This is this will be one of the rare occasions that I'm neither not Brad and I for that fact. Or, or, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out there. Here we go. Here I'm just we go. Throw it out there. <laughs> We change venues. Last yeah, minute. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, let me you go. Get, we'll do it in the time. lobby. <laughs> yes. You get married at at Cineplex Toronto. Do, do you that realize how loud. viral? Do you realize how viral we would go? It'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah. That I'll would never be worrying about subscribers ever again. Yeah, that that's... would take us to the next level. It would. That's that's an idea, guys. You're being um, selfish, Kelly. Anyway, um, and it's so funny that you say what you just said, Rob, because literally I watched that trailer. My um, fiance was in the other room. He was uh, finishing up a meeting. So I watched it on my own because I couldn't wait. And then I just walked in. And the first thing that I mm -hmm. said to him was like, the MCU's kind of back now. Like, yeah. ah, like it nice. feels like it just had the OG feel that I haven't even. And, you know, I've enjoyed a lot of the things that you named Rob, particularly Spider-Man No Way Home was a very special movie experience, I think, for all of us. Yeah. But just the humor in this and seeing some of the OG characters yeah. and Chris Hemsworth is just... He looks fantastic. He's just a... He's so charismatic and so likable and just some of the 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 humorous beats in this like when he you know he gets in uh uh star star lord's like eye line yeah. and he's, like it's just ah uh, like it yeah it gave me it gave me all the all the good goosies yes yes no right over to you I, I fully agree like i think everybody's kind of on the same page that that's that's kind of what i keep hearing from everybody is it's just like yes like yes we've been we've also known about uh thor love and thunder for a while now that this movie was going to, was in, you know, pre-production then production and COVID and all that, which is, which is the ongoing theme with a lot of movies that are going to be coming out this year. But still, this was one that I think a lot of people, us included, have been very excited for just because we knew that this was going to be kind of, again, like leading back to the original Avengers feel. You know what I mean? Like that, that original cast that we got to know. And and Chris Hemsworth looking like traditional Thor. I love the scene where he's working out with the yeah. chains and everything. Eight, to get 80s workout, workout montage. Oh, montage. oh my yeah. god! It was and a I strongest burst out Avenger laughing. hat. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Unbelievably funny. And I just the thing that kind of just popped back in my head was where Thor started as far as being a part of the MCU and where he is now is yeah. so vastly different. Yeah. And and uh Taika Watiti. 
Exactly. And what I was going to say was, this is in no way disrespect to Kenneth Branagh, who did the first one. He's an unbelievable person in Hollywood across the board, actor, director, writer, all of those things. But Taika really took that character and elevated it to a place because I really don't think people knew what to make of Thor, even though that was maybe... Dude, Chris Hemsworth didn't know what to make of Thor. Well, that's like, what I mean. There's a famous yeah. story about him going to Feige after the Dark World and being like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. enjoying this. No, and especially, you know, after after the sequel, it was kind of like, what are we doing here with this character? And Taika just comes in and puts his total hilarious mind in the work in the world of Thor and just twisted everything around gave Thor these layers that I don't think anybody really thought of before and it was one of the few times I think people were really on board with changing a a traditional character up and you're just seeing a more elevated version of it already in this in this teaser because it's not even a full trailer uh even though we got a lot uh but Mm -hmm. the The thing, yeah, I just, oh my God, those funny sequences, like I said, where he's working out, the, the, the just slowly coming into frame and looking <laughs> yeah. at Star Wars. I was bursting out laughing. And then just to cap it off too, we get a little Natalie Portman. Yeah, we get a little. So I want to talk about like key takeaways from, from the trailer. So yeah, as you just said, Brad, this very much feels like it's picking up where Taika left off with Ragnarok, yeah. like the same sort of like very colorful, like vibrant aesthetic. Um, yeah. The Stunning. humor is front and center. Mm-hmm. We get um, the Guardians. We get our first look at Russell Crowe from behind as Zeus. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. And as you just said, we get our first look at Nat Poe, jacked Nat Poe. I don't Those know if you guys saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacked Nat Poe, a.k.a. Jane Foster, a.k.a. Yeah. the Mighty Thor. Mm-hmm. We get our first look at her. This movie is really going to sort of center around her and Thor's relationship and her becoming the mighty Thor. Yeah. I'm really mm-hmm. intrigued by her and where this goes. Like, is she sticking around after this? Is she the new Thor? Is this a one-off thing they're doing for this movie? Is she like, is she assuming the role? Like what? The, to I me, it's like, around. where's this going? I think she's sticking around. I think, cause there was so much uh, behind the scenes, I think drama that went on with, with uh, Natalie Portman in the studio and just, all the things she just didn't want to do it or she didn't like where it was going or there was a lot of back and forth thing and stuff. And it's fine. Like the things like that kind of come up from time to time. We even just alluded to it with Chris Hemsworth for, for God's sakes. But the thing is, is with this, it, it felt very like, this is something we're going to get moving forward. And I wouldn't be surprised given the fact that she's Natalie Portman, that she would get her own standalone MCU movie or, or potentially show but I would be guessing movie uh, and I'm here for it. The thing that I didn't realize, and a lot of people were pulling this up after the teaser came out was the relationship that uh, uh, she as Thor will have with the new captain America. It was a comic book arc. And I was kind of like, what? I don't know if I'm ready to see that on film, but that'd be kind of cool in a way. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't know, whatever we're, we're kind of at this elevated stage in comic book movies is what I'm alluding to here is the fact that nothing's off the table. So I'm okay with it. Let's go. Let's, let's see a, let's see a Natalie Portman as Thor full movie. I think it would probably be pretty good. Kelly, your thoughts on Nat Poe. Nat Poe. First of all, I actually thought she like, sometimes when our superhero friends are wearing a mask like that, it looks kind of goofy. Like it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that doesn't always translate well off the page. I thought she right. looked great. Like she great. she's, she, you know, she's obviously got jacked up for the movie, but she's also like a very petite woman. Yeah. Um, so she looked like I was, I was very pleasant, pleasantly surprised by just like the character design and, yeah. and bringing that off the page. So that's the first thing I'll say. And then, Yeah, like I'm with you, Brad, that I think anything is possible. I sort of think about where Natalie Portman is in her career and like what she'd be willing to sign on for and what she might not. But we're entering this stage of the MCU where I don't think we're we're creating any more like trilogies or anything like that. I think it's just she may pop into someone else's movie. She may sit on a council of gods in some other in some other thing. Like there's just so many ways now to have all of these characters, but not mm. have these actors have to sort of um, 
come make these big commitments that it seems like a lot of the actors that's been the trepidation about joining this Marvel circus, right? Is like, okay, do I have to sell my soul to this? And I think as they've built this machine, Kevin Feige can say to them like, no, like, you can show up for an hour worth of shooting and be in the new Spider-Man movie or be in this movie and then see you later. We'll see you in six, six movies from now. Right. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I, I I'm not sure if she's going to be like the Thor, but I think when we're in a multiverse of possibilities, yeah. she, maybe she goes off to another, another universe and is Thor there or whatever. Right. Like there's just, yeah. there's, there's so many places this can go. Um, we get a look at Russell Crowe um, yeah. from behind a very brief shot playing mm-hmm. Zeus. Love that casting. Yeah. Um, there's speculation online that his, his part in this movie will not be very big as he will be sort of the introduction to Gore, the God butcher, right? Note right. The last two words, God butcher. Mm. Um, I've been seeing a lot of, listen, I've been seeing, I wanted to table this with you guys. All right. I've been seeing a lot of discourse online. Okay. Hear me out. Russell Crowe is playing Zeus. <laughs> Russell Crowe is playing Zeus. Right. Where there's a Jorel, there's a Superman. Where there's a Zeus, there's a Hercules. Yeah. Mm. I think it would be an amazing F you to Warner Brothers and Disney <laughs> to cast Henry Cavill as Hercules. Wow. And not even just out of spite, the guy could totally pull off playing Hercules. Oh, yeah. Like a bearded Henry that's, Cavill. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, he's played, there's he's played a... a shot, um, there's a shot in the trailer that everyone is speculating that they've removed someone. So it's when, like, I guess Thor is looking up and he's got Korg beside him and then there's a lot of empty space on the other side there. So people are speculating that they've removed someone from that shot. I'm not saying it's Hercules. It could be anybody. Mm-hmm. But Zeus's sons are Ares and Hercules. Yeah. So right. I think do it, Marvel. Do it. D- DC is just going to throw him in the garbage. So <laughs> pick him up and yeah. cast him as Hercules. Let justice go. for Henry. No justice, justice for, Henry. for Henry. Yes. No, honestly. Well, uh, what I was going to say too was, is that like, I mean, this isn't even, uh, you know, take – take Superman away from it. Cause I don't know that Henry necessarily has to get like that big again. But if you look at Henry Cavill in a movie like immortals that he did, which was kind of like a Greek mythology type movie. It makes sense. Yes. It makes sense. Totally pull it he off. looks the Do part. It. He's, he's got the, Do it. you know, I think that would just like be he's... so great of Feige to just go. And, and bring in Henry Cavill and make him Hercules. Well, for those it. listening to the audio version, Rob version. just flipped off the camera. There yes. you go. We might have to blur it. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. The, uh, the, hide, hide the children. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the, yeah. I just think that, again, everything that's going on with Warner Brothers right now, and they've essentially said they're trying to find somebody to, to be a Kevin Feige type for their for their uh, cinematic universe that's a whole uh, episode 10, <laughs> ten years <laughs> 10 years after they started it it's just kind of yeah. like yeah we we've really whiffed on this uh <laughs> and the flux with Ezra Miller and all this other stuff that's going on it's just kind of like yeah t- br- bring it. him back bring him back Do into it. a superhero yeah, fold 100%. like the guy the guy earned it or or bring him back for god's sakes as as superman and just do it properly this time but i don't know yeah i i like it i'm not going to say i don't so we've listed a lot of the takeaways. Another takeaway is something we didn't see. We did not mm. see Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're, how long they're going to keep him under wraps. I think we will get our first look at him um, in the in the, the first like full length trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that they didn't give him away. Yeah. I'm kind of nervous. Me too. I'm kind of nervous about. We'll we'll dive deeper into this as as we get closer to this movie being released. But mm-hmm. like, I am nervous about this character because, you know, you've got Christian Bale playing him, and from what I've sort of researched, is is Gore is one of the more uh, prominent villains in, in the Thor sort of mythology. Mm-hmm. I just really hope, like you know, like please don't cast an actor like Christian Bale and give him the typical Marvel villain treatment it's like we're seeing 
like we're going to talk about Moon Knight in a second, but like we're seeing um, what a great job they're doing with Ethan Hawke. And it's like, I, I really yeah. hope that like Christian Bale gets that same treatment and isn't just sort of Mm -hmm. there because that is that is a criticism that marvel gets often and i do mm -hmm. think it's it's just so i really hope i have faith in, in taika but i am if there's one thing that makes me nervous going into this movie it's that it's like don't just cast an actor of this caliber and make him your run-of-the-mill marvel villain yeah go ahead kelly Oh, I was just going to say, like, I I agree that I don't want him to be obviously relegated to just being a kind of a throwaway, like, useless villain. Like, totally agree there. I think what'll be interesting and I think will be a bit of a mental shift that we should all go into this movie with is, like, the three of us, even though we've seen a lot of his other work, like Christian Bale is our Batman in a lot of ways. And I think that you don't take a role with Taika Waititi unless you're like probably going to do something pretty comedic. And we know Christian Bale can do comedy like in a weird way through like American Psycho and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. I think we do have to adjust our expectations that like, I think he's going to be pretty silly in this movie. I'm good with that. Just don't um, make him a blood nothing villain. That's all I yeah. care. I think he's going to be, I actually think it's going to be so jarring how silly he is. That is my prediction that he is going to be like overly hilarious because I think that that's something that we haven't seen Christian Bale do fully yet. I, hmm, I don't know. I, I, that's actually interesting. I hadn't thought of it that way, but that's, um, I, I, I now wouldn't be surprised if I saw it that way based on your explanation, but I, I actually, you know what? I, Christian Bale to me is just one of those actors like like we're alluding to here, right? That he doesn't take something on that he can't dig his teeth into, mm -hmm. uh, right? So I, what I'm what I'm actually expecting here, as far as like performance wise, whether and I'm not saying it's going to be like one thing or the other, like really funny or really serious. I actually think Christian Bale wants to do something where he is playing like a really intense villain because it's not really something other than you know obviously you can make the argument for american psycho things like that where it's been like a darker tone but i'm talking about like a really kind of like scary villain those villains that we kind of put on that like upper echelon just because there's going to be so much comedy throughout the rest of the movie that i just feel like this is and and also too i think you're even going to get that with russell crowe's character um as zeus and so i really think you might get this kind of counterbalance with you know everybody's being kind of funny and there these there's these moments of levity that it's almost going to be like whoa this guy's like chewing the scenery here and that's more what i've been kind of gearing up for a little bit and i just i really don't i really don't see kevin feige and the writers and and disney bringing on somebody like christian bale and doing that and i don't see christian bale being the type of actor that he is to take a role just for a paycheck. So I just, I think he wouldn't do it unless he was going to be like able to like really dig in and do something special with it. So I, I really don't think this is going to be something we have to worry about as far as him being like a, a side piece in the rest of the movie. Well, we have lots of time. Well, we don't really have that much time, but we have enough bit. time to speculate on this as we, we get closer and closer to the movie's release. Um, mm -hmm. Looks awesome. Really, really stoked. Moving on. Yes. Moon Knight, episode four. <sighs> Woo! This was a trip. I love this. This episode yeah. was a trip. So in this episode, we predominantly saw Stephen and Layla going through like Amit's tomb. Mm -hmm. um, Harrow and his, his followers have already entered the tomb. They follow them in there. Um, I'm really into... Like, Kelly, you said in a text earlier, and I want to dive in um, on this with you, like, where you're like, oh, I was kind of bored until the end. Like, I didn't feel yeah. that way, but I think Me that's either. because, like, I'm super into the whole Egyptian thing. Like, Me too. Yeah, like, I think that's why. Well, I, I want to clarify my comment. Okay. It's not that I was watching this episode and was saying this episode sucks until the end. I think it was that the big complaint about the Marvel TV shows has been a bit of pacing. And just mm -hmm. feeling like they kind of move a little slowly up until episode four or five. And then they try and squish something in at the end, a la Kingpin. 
Um, and mm-hmm. so it was more me kind of going like, we're at episode four. Like, is something more going to happen? And you got you got your question. Yeah. yeah. So it was sort of a cumulative like, right. The show's on the verge of losing me. And then it did what it needed to do. So, <laughs> so I want to, I want to talk about like a couple uh, parts in this episode. The first part is like, um, Steven and Layla enter, uh, Amit's tomb. They're looking for Amit's little stone statue, which they later find in, in the throat of Alexander the great. Yes. But while searching through the tomb, they come to this like Pharaoh, like butcher shop dismembering station the that moment no scary. that's where they would that's where they would that was that scary that's was where scary. they would do the mummification process they would like remove but the organs and put them in what the are those? jars are those zombies like i, I know they kind of talk about it in the episode where they're like they were the sorcerers of their time or whatever but it's yeah. like are they are they undead like what I believe so. I think that's so yeah. much of the mummy. I, I believe me as well. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I thought it was yeah, very where like. Where is Brendan Fraser? We need where is yes. Brendan Fraser and Anuk Sunamun? Uh, yes. I just, uh, I do An think. Emotep. Emotep. Where <laughs> is Emotep? Emotep. Uh, oh God, that movie scared the crap out of me the first time I saw it. Uh, but the, uh, or he did, not the movie. But the, um, uh, yeah, the thing I was taking away from it was it was very like Ethan Hawke's Harrow's henchman like he has this power to bring these people to his aid if if need be um, oh okay okay because i at was least, like do that's they how it played to me down here uh i mean it's possible Th- that's yeah. how it played to me because okay. even yeah. even once the chase happened uh and and layla kind of just barely gets away and climbs back up and and ethan hawks harrow is across the ways like you you handled that masterfully it was kind of like okay he he kind of sent him after her or them yeah. uh and and you know the thing i have to say really quickly too was right as this episode started as well there was a moment at the beginning that i was kind of like oh no because and, and don't get me wrong don't get it twisted i absolutely love this episode but right at the beginning there was kind of this uh you know where we left off and they're in they're in the desert and somebody's chasing them in their in their car and whatever and Layla goes and jumps in the car and somehow they lose her. Like there's only so many places she could hide. And they're like, I wanted we'll to check bring out the this car. up. Brad, it you was like me to it. I wanted it, to table this with the both of you. Yeah. Listen, it's Marvel. We all know how Marvel works. Well, whatever. They are really asking us to suspend our disbelief <laughs> with Layla. Where'd she go? <laughs> Layla uh, but it was also, flares. It was just, it was like, what? It was like the worst recon mission ever. They were like, go check the car. And they're like, well, with their flashlight, and that was it. But listen, that was that was such like a that was such like a random footnote in the excellence you guys of that whole episode. Believe, you guys are gonna have me believe that Layla took out trained killers and then an undead zombie mummy mummifier <laughs> guy with flares, with traffic flares. The only but thing I'm gonna Layla. say is is there's been some precedent that like Layla. Yeah, she's got some is, training. She's got some training, right? Like, because yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. like, why is she being groomed to be the next avatar and stuff? So I do think yes, Layla's got a little bit more like street cred that we're mm-hmm. giving. You think her I need that. to ease off Layla? Yeah, I think you need to give <laughs> Layla a yeah, yeah. break here. Come on. Like, come on. Poor Layla. Actually, can I just share one nerd fact with you? Because Rob, sure. you always you always go on about how when you do a deep dive and you learn something. So then mm-hmm. I went and looked up like what were those weird blue zombie monster guys i think they were blue and like oh, why right. were they making like a weird clicking noise and whatever and so oh, what I yeah found, that was creepy too and mm-hmm. so what i found out it's because like they themselves were like mummified organ whatever so they don't Tongues have a tongue good. yes and they don't and they don't have eyes yes so it's like there are like species of bat in like our real world Ooh. who will do that to kind of echo and they can hear their environment so that is my right. national geographic uh huh. fun fact to share with you guys today in case you were wondering about yes the undead zombie mummy blue guy i well, actually had go. assumed i had assumed something along those lines was happening because the clicking i was like oh because they don't have tongues but that makes perfect sense it's like kind of like their own like little radar like system. sonar yeah oh, oh i like that um, <laughs> we then find out after layla takes one of those things out um we then find out like harrow 
reveals to her that Mark had involvement in the death of her father, who is a famed sort of archaeologist. Yes. Um, and this has her very upset to the point mm-hmm. that she's unable to calm herself when they're in a very scary... I'm really picking on Layla this episode, <laughs> but she's unable to calm herself and think rationally when they're inside the tomb of Alexander the Great mm-hmm. and Harrow's henchmen are coming. She, she doesn't care. She wants answers right then and there. She pulled a Star Lord. She pulled a Star Lord. Yes, yes she True. wanted answers right then and there about right then. Um, did he kill her father? And he mm-hmm. reveals he did not kill her father, but he was present when her father was killed. Right. Mm-hmm. This then leads to Harrow coming in and shooting Mark, who falls backwards. And what came next? I don't think any of us saw it coming. He falls back. I didn't know this. what was happening for a he solid falls, couple minutes. He falls back into this 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 pool of water, and we go through this sort of pinhole white light into like a white room psychiatric facility. Mm-hmm. Well, no, we go to like a VHS movie of a a character named Stephen Grant exploring tombs in Did it somewhere. not? Was that not brilliant, though, that VHS yeah. thing? Because yes. one, two things. One, there was a solid moment where I was like, did my, did something just screw up on <laughs> Disney Plus? Because the what they did film, because you know what it also reminded me of? Do you remember in Home Alone where there was the movies that, you know, Kevin was always watching and it was like the old gangster movie? Well, those were actually movies that were filmed as a part of Home Alone. They weren't actually a real movie. Well, this was this was a similar thing. But yeah. they made it very much look and feel like a Disney, you know, a Disney Channel movie from the 90s. And it was that. And I think that's why I kind of tripped out because I was like, well, this feels like Disney. What am I watching here? Like, what is actually going on? Uh, so uh, that just as a little side note, I thought was brilliant. I thought that was so brilliant. And it just led a to tomb more buster of, tomb buster. It just led yeah. to more of the confusion as to like, then they came out of it and you're in a psych ward and you're like, Oh, oh okay. And everything around the room is, is like leading to the, like the greater story of what's going on. Like Harrow's actually a psychologist. There's like Egyptian, um, like artifacts all over, all over the um, Mark, facility. Mark, Mark has the little action figure of, yes, of Moon Knight. Of Moon Knight. The and dude Layla appears to be another patient. Yes. The dude yes. who's calling the bingo numbers is the gold guy. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. And then if you also look around, like the woman he asked out on a date from the museum is there. Like, uh, mm-hmm. like basically all the people that we've seen in little snippet roles are yes. in the environment. Yes. Um, they're like, and then also like, you know, for a psychiatric ward, there's a lot of a lot of cupcakes there, right? And that like yes. harkens back to the first episode when he's driving a cupcake truck. Like uh, you could spend yes. you could spend I that actually. You could spend four hours like freeze framing every little bit of that last, what is it, five minutes? Mm-hmm. And the Easter eggs are insane. It'll take a much nerdier yeah. mind than than <laughs> mine right. to to weed all of those out, but they're all there. Yes. Yes. You know, the thing, the thing I was just going to say really quickly and the, the, the movie name has escaped me. So I'm trying to find it really quick, but maybe you guys remember the, the movie that, uh, Anthony Hopkins did where he won the Oscar. Was it called the father? What was Uh, that movie called? I'm going to find it right now, but regardless, uh, yes, the father. So in the movie, the father, he's essentially going through stages of like dementia and there's these kind of interconnecting moments where you're like is this happening is this not happening and and while this whole thing and it's and it's very like almost anxiety inducing when you're watching that movie i got the exact same feel in that scene where he is in the psych ward and you are seeing oscar isaacs uh mark and and steven run through this gambit of like is this actually happening it was this all actually in my head did i put this together myself and then you can see him battling these moments of like oh my god it, I, I was making this up and oh wait no i wasn't no this, this yeah. camp and, and it was just like oh yeah find steven and then they see another sarcophagus who people are speculating is the third persona jake mm-hmm. lockley right um and then they run into the hippopotamus egyptian god of fertility 
of fertility. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and they're just, Makes total and that's sense. how it ends. So here's my question to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's real here? I, you know, what I took away from it was that this was some sort of purgatory, some sort mm -hmm. of uh, Egyptian style, you know, old worldy ancient belief purgatory that, uh, Harrow is, is, is controlling in some form or another. And I don't know how at this point, I don't know. And I don't think we are supposed to know. Uh, unless you follow the comic books, I'm sure insanely close, and maybe there's some did, alluding to this. I but. did see that this that this follows a particular um, comic arc of Moon Knight, where um, okay. he is battling with: is this all in my head, or is this real? Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And so, okay, so that makes sense. And then, but whether or not this is just all going on in his head, or that this is Harrow, like somehow Harrow's doing, I'm not totally sure. Because yeah. there didn't there didn't seem to be a break in this psychiatrist version of Harrow where there wasn't like a you know even like a little smirk or something like that that he was really doing this he seemed to really be playing that character of the psychiatrist so I'm not I I don't know what to take from it at this point as far as like if it's being controlled by him or it's all actually completely in his head but I think this is going to at some point come to a head, whether it's next episode. I, I would assume it would have to be next episode just based on timing. There's only two left. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I don't think you can leave it till, till the sixth episode, but regardless, I, I, I think this is in his head. I think this is a form of purgatory. Kelly, your theory. Yeah. So let me just be clear that I actually don't know what the hell is going on, but I'm going to give you my best guess. <laughs> okay. Um, so we see the little statue of Conchu being put up on a shelf with yeah. a bunch of other little statues, meaning that mm -hmm. there are a good number of Egyptian gods who are captured. Um, mm -hmm. And one of those statues from the nerds on the internet, thank you, um, <laughs> is, is uh, a hippo god lady. So mm. is How this- How do you pronounce her name? I, I'm- Tuaret? <laughs> T A W E R E T. Toire? Your guess is <laughs> as good as mine. Toire? Even in the comments, folks, we need a phonetic, we phonetic, need a phonetic spelling of yeah. that name. Thank you. Um, but anyway, where I'm getting at is like, I think I'm with you, Brad, that like it's a purgatory place where like wherever people are being almost like stored. Cause yeah. like, that's why she's there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's tower somewhere in the mid. Okay. Thank you. Well, how yeah. do you say it? Towerette. Towerette. Okay. okay. Sounds like a candy. Yeah. Like it's, so it's somewhere where, oh. um, like your, your mind goes when you're kind of in, a state of and i guess that that's purgatory like you're you're just kind of caught in the middle and i think that's why i think we're going to see maybe possibly other egyptian gods in this place mm -hmm. um why mark is there and is separate from steven now and then also you know the the third iteration like i don't i don't know well, but I love that I don't know. What 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 intrigues me is Harrow's role because I think you you guys are right, and I think it's going to be Mark, Stephen, and then eventually Jake meeting up with Khonshu mm. and breaking out of this purgatory, as you guys have put it. But I want to know right. like what is Harrow's role? He seems to be in control of what's going on. Is he who he says he is? Mm -hmm. Like is is he just Arthur Harrow, the guy who's loyal to Amit, or is he somebody else? Right. The thing, I mean, one of the, one of the little side notes I was going to pop in here too, is it's such an interesting way to show the relationship between Mark and Steven now, because they are actually separate from each other, even though it is in this kind of dream state or purgatory state or what have you. Uh, I think that this is, in my opinion, clearly a setup to show how these two are going to be working together going forward. Because there's been obviously this conflict, a very comedic moment where he kissed Layla and 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 Mark made Stephen himself punch himself. Face. I actually really very I, very I, fight I, club. Very fight club. Yes, thank you. That's very good. The uh, I think that the um, I just think that the general 
motive of having them kind of, you know, helping each other in this moment and and probably going forward, like you said, Rob, great point, that, that they're probably going to go find Conchu and 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 get out of this in some fashion. The uh, I do think that adds such an interesting dynamic to that character going forward as well. Um, and uh, yeah, the, I cannot, I really cannot decide if Arthur Harrow is in charge here because it doesn't, it didn't seem like, for instance, because now we're saying, okay, they're in the same world Conchu and and Mark and Steven that they're that they're in this purgatory state. It didn't look like Harrow had control over Conchu while he's in this purgatory statue thing. But uh it doesn't mean it's not happening. So I, I am actually really interested to see going forward what that's gonna do. But I do like where they're going with Mark and Steven going forward. I do think that that's a really interesting twist to see them work together. So we're all in favor are and in agreement that we're intrigued by this last five minutes of this episode. Uh, yeah, that's I was statement. <laughs> I was I was intrigued honestly by the whole thing. I thought so was I. But but this is yeah. this is a left turn. Oh, I was not yeah. expecting that at all. I didn't know yeah. what was I, going on. Yeah, I think it was. But I think this is like you know from my viewing experience. Like I said, I've been enjoying the show, mm-hmm. but. I think I, I was talking with a friend of mine who's watching the show as well. And, and what I was saying to them is like, during the press junket leading up to this, there were so many, like, there was so much hyperbole thrown around of like, yeah. you won't believe like, this is a, like, this is the most insane performance you've ever seen from an actor when they're talking about Oscar Isaac. And as I was watching the show, I was like, he's doing a great job, but am I like, Oh my God. And then there was, you know, comparing it to like Iron Man levels of of greatness and also talking about, you know, this is this is really like a groundbreaking uh, show in terms of mental health and, and, and an examination. And I think as I was watching the show, I was just like waiting for all that hype to happen. Mm. And we we've kind of arrived at where I think all of the actors were being kind of cheeky in the press junket because they knew this insane left turn was coming yeah you know what i smart i will (laughs) i will (laughs) i will say this uh oscar isaac's performance as far as the mcu is concerned stands alone like there's nothing else like it in my opinion really Uh, i don't think so that is a statement and a half well no i just think that like as far as like comparing it to other performance that has been that have been given i don't i mean the character is very different but well, that's what I mean. But as far as and, like what, not not as far as like you know being like above you're not nom- or below. you're not na- nominating him for best actor in a Marvel movie. <laughs> well, maybe you're no. nominating him, but you're maybe not giving him the, 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 this made up Oscar. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. I just right. I would I would more say that it's just like as far as what he has brought to the table and what and who the character is is very different than anything else that absolutely oh yeah. for sure very for sure. different and for i sure. and i so appreciate that and even like we've talked about this in previous episodes but even just the fact that he himself kind of came up with that idea for there just to be an accent differential between so, so, to, sorry to help differentiate between mark and steven you obviously could have done that just with you know, the choices that he did make as far as Steven being very meek and mild and Mark being this kind of badass, kick-ass guy. Uh, I just thought that it was such an interesting choice that it and, it and it worked so well. Also, given the fact that they were in London, blah, blah, all these things that he mentioned. But uh, I do I do just appreciate what he has done. I do also, on the same level as what Ethan Hawke, like I've previously said, has brought to it, this very toned-down villain that I really oh, don't the, think the, we've got. The scene... The scene with him and Layla, he's he's very so sinister. good. He's very sinister, in and I appreciate he's, that. Yeah, not yeah, everything he's, he's has really, to chew the scenery. I just yeah, and I sure. love that. I love when they do that, things like that when it calls for it. But I just thought that there was such an opening here, and and Ethan Hawke has now a, like very much said that he he kind of read the room as far as like what was going to be going on with Oscar Isaac's character, and he kind of went, okay, I need to do this. I need to be that counterbalance. And that scene between Layla and him was so great. It was yeah, so, it was so great. One of the things when this finale is in a couple of weeks that I'm interested to like talk with about you guys is like the future of this character and yeah. how he's going to um, 
sort of balance those three personas going forward. Because I do think yeah. we're getting Jake Lockley. I do think we're getting the third yeah, I think persona. So. I think so. They're teasing it a lot. There was the scene a couple episodes ago where um, somebody killed the hench, like all those people. And um, Mark's like, Stephen, what did you do? And Stephen's right. like, it wasn't me. It like, mm. can I throw out a, can I throw out a, um, a theory in my, yes. so we find out that Layla's father was murdered by, um, Mark's partner. Right. You think we don't know who that Lockley. potentially like yeah. potentially. Could be a, it could be another person, but I thought like, you know, this is the person that we've seen has capacity for true violence Yes. out of the three personas right yeah. and so that that sort of like put a light bulb in my head and then you know we see the uh the tomb or the, the i'm not sure if i'm getting all the terminology right but they don't he frees stephen the grant sarcophagus and the, excuse me oh my yeah. god How brendan frazier oh would be <laughs> so disappointed yeah. in me i'm brushing up on all the lingo <laughs> yes so they free stephen grant but they leave the third one encased and what yeah. i thought was interesting and as we're talking about ethan hawk and i'll sort of leave it here of like let's see where this goes is like when he shoots mark specter he says i can't save someone who won't save themselves and then when he's in the room with like psychiatrist um ethan hawk he says like I can't help somebody who won't help themselves. Mm. And so I wonder if there's like an element of like to get to whatever realization we need to get to, they need to free Jake Lockley and like yeah. have him. That's, that's where I'm thinking. Like, it's like that's he's compartmentalized him or something. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I think that's a missing piece of the puzzle here. That's going to take us to a really interesting place. Yeah. I think that is a great place to leave this episode off on Kelly. Um, we will be back job, next Kelly. week to review oh, episode five. Um, as I said earlier, the three of us are extremely intrigued by where the show is going. And I've really enjoyed this thus far. I know you guys have well. too. And after we, um, see the finale in episode six we'll do sort of a post-mortem thanks everybody for checking us out if you like what you see hit that like and subscribe button below spread the word tell your friends we really appreciate it as always if you're listening to the audio version of the show hit that follow button leave a five-star review every little bit helps we really appreciate it thanks everybody see you next week see ya